Welcome to the eighth annual Creating Connections Breakfast. I hope you enjoyed your food. Thanks to Luba and all of our students here in the Culinary Arts Program. My name is Kathy Mullins and I am proud to serve as the Vice President for College Advancement and the Director of the GRCC Foundation. I would like to begin this morning's program by um, recognizing and thanking the GRCC Foundation Board members that are here. If you could just wave. And also the GRCC Board of Trustee members that are here today. If you could wave. Thank you all for coming and thanks so much for all that you do. I also want to take a moment to thank these talented young men that are sitting here beside me today for our GRCC Jazz Combo. There are music students at GRCC and we're pretty proud of them. We have, we have with us this morning Griffin Going. <laughs> Peter Cripps, and the famous D. Washington. <laughs> this morning we celebrate relationships and we welcome the opportunity for donors and scholarship recipients to connect. I am all, I'm happy to report this morning that we have record-breaking attendance for this particular breakfast. We have 166 people with us this morning, and that is phenomenal for us, and we're very thankful to you all for coming. Now for some logistics before we get started with the formal program. We understand that some of our students may have to get up and head out because they have class, and we definitely want them to do that because we know that their success, I need you to all listen, students, your success is 100% dependent on you going to class. So we want you to go to class. So for those of you who need it, we have parking passes available and you can get it on your way out. Um, one of my staff will help you with that. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Steve Ender, the president of Grand Rapids Community College. Well, good morning and welcome. Beautiful morning, almost spring. Will be spring tomorrow. We'll go away Sunday. <laughs> so I, I was driving over this morning thinking about my audience, you know, who I would be welcoming and what they represent. And I, two words came to my mind very quickly, uh, and they were opportunity and hope. And I use those words in this context for all of you wonderful donors in this room, you have provided our students a significant opportunity. Now, many of our students would not be here without your support. And the wonderful thing about GRCC is, you know, small donations can mean, and I'm just talking $100, the difference for a student being able to buy a textbook or not buy a textbook. Uh, your support goes a long, long way. So you provide tremendous opportunity for our students. And from a, the student's perspective, um, as a donor, students, uh, you provide hope. I mean, we all hope and pray that our country, our region, and our county will evolve and prosper. And that only occurs through the strength of the people that live and work there. And so you students are our hope. You're our hope for the future. And when you bring together opportunity and hope, wonderful and marvelous things can happen. And, and that's what this room represents to me this morning. So I want to thank each and every one of you, donors for your commitment, students for your hard work and dedication. Uh, Larry and I were talking with the Bristols earlier. Oh, I'd like to think I was this um, tuned in when I was a freshman and sophomore in college that I wasn't. Trust me, this, <laughs> you know, but it's just, it's, and that's what I love about our student body, quite frankly. Um, there's just not a sense of entitlement here. 
you know, our students kind of know why they're here and, and what they're doing. And even if they don't have that career pathway in mind, they've made an internal decision that this experience is important and it's going to take them to a place that's better than where they are today. And I know I did not have that perspective when I was 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. Uh, so this is a wonderful um, institution. We are blessed with wonderful faculty, staff, students, board members, donors. Uh, when you, th that's the magic sauce, you know. And so uh, we are all part of this magic sauce. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for being with us to celebrate this morning. Uh, the opportunity and hope that you all represent. Thank you. Thank you, President Ender. Next, we're going to take a minute to watch a video highlighting the Tommy Brand Steakhouse and Grill Scholarship. Tommy Brand created this scholarship in 1999 as a way to recognize the hard work and tenacity of his 43 years as a restaurateur and to honor his colleague and friend, Frank Van Norman. Tommy says that he created the scholarship to leave his legacy and to honor Frank because, and I quote, I would not be, here, not be where I am today without Frank and his work, unquote. Here today representing the scholarship fund is Tommy Brand as well as the 2015 and 16 recipient, Larry Phillips. Larry is currently enrolled in the Secchia Institute for Culinary Education program here at GRCC. And I am also happy to introduce a very new and dear friend to me now, Frank Van Norman and his wife, Shirley. Thank you all for being here. Now let's go ahead and watch the video. <laughs> I started when I was 19 on Division Street 44 years ago. My dad lent me $30,000 and he did one of the best things he did to make me pay that back with interest that made me my own person. I really appreciate that from dad. One of the second best things he did was he saw the talent of Frank Van Norman. We bought the restaurant, it was closed, but Frank was part of that restaurant that closed and my dad said, this guy's really special. Keep him just so he sticks around. So. I took my dad's advice and did that, and, um, and Frank was just a, like a brother to me. The way he helped me with my restaurant, he treated it like his own place. Um, he cared about me personally, and he cared about the restaurant. He paid me to stay. He paid my salary to stay, so I wouldn't go out and get another job at the time. So that's how I started working for Tommy. He bought into the place, and I was part of it. Well, I mean, I worked hard, and um, I'm very like a frugal businessman, but that was a good 20 to 30 years of my life. And then I finally opened my eyes up, and there's really more than my restaurant out there. There's, there's another community. And I reached out to um, Joe Barella. Joe's recommended GRCC scholarship, which keeps your legacy going. And I, what's probably unique about it and was that I thought of Frank and Van Norman. So I made sure like um, the first recipients would be a a black person that, um, that needed it, needed help. I actually chose culinary arts when I first came to Grand Rapids, but I was discouraged that it would be too much for me being a single mom. So as my children got older, I decided to come back and really follow my passion. Coming from Benton Harbor, Michigan, you know, and not being given too many chances to make it out and to hold on to a dream as time progressed, I made some decisions that led me in places I didn't want to be. And four years ago, I moved to Grand Rapids and I was able to enroll in a GRCC and the culinary program. This is my senior year. 
Every day feels like a dream. Culinary arts is a therapy for me. It's something that I love to know that I can please you with my cooking and make you feel good. For me, that is just like the most amazing feeling that someone can ever have, if it's something that they enjoy doing. To be able to go to school here and get the knowledge and understanding of what it takes to be a chef, being able to be on a path that has upliftment, laughter, most importantly, love. Man, I ain't getting off that path. Never went to school for cooking. I learned on a job, <laughs> and it ain't easy. It was kind of hard because I was a single parent. Financial aid was still very limited, and I didn't qualify for, not, for, for financial aid. And so that means a great deal to me. I'm very appreciative to have a scholarship to have finished my degree in culinary arts. And, and it's so important to have an education because I look at myself when I was cooking, I could have went a lot further if I had more education, a lot further. And I regret that I didn't have more education. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Frank, and he is my friend, and, and I, I love him. This has been an experience that will last me, man, and hopefully my children a lifetime. Scholarships, funding, that's why I'm sitting here right now. That's why we're here. That's why we do the work that we do. And um, I am very, very thankful to you, Tommy, for, for stepping up and endowing a scholarship. And um, I wish Larry and Gina here um, great success as they finish up their time here at GRCC. And um, I'd also like to announce this morning, um, Tommy has asked that we change the name of the scholarship and we now call it the Tommy Brand and the Frank Van Norman Scholarship. Thank you. <laughs> now we're going to brag on our students a little more. I'm going to um, introduce to you the first of two scholarship recipient speakers this morning, Mr. Blake Marvin. Blake is the recipient of the Lottie Peters Scholarship the Philip Brunkle Scholarship, and the Weggie Teachers of Tomorrow Scholarship. With us today, representing the um, Lottie Peters Scholarship, is Till Peters and his wife, Bernice. Thanks for being here. Blake, go ahead and step up. Good morning. I'd like to express what an honor it is to be speaking on behalf of all scholarship recipients to express the utmost gratitude that we have for all of our donors here today. You all have recognized the hard work and dedication that we have set forth for ourselves as we set forth in this higher education chapter in our lives. My name is Blake, and I'd like to take a moment to explain how I came here today. As a young high school graduate, I entered into the world of college education at Muskegon Community College back in 2011 without a clue as to what I was doing. And let me tell you, school is expensive. So after one semester of college, I decided that I was not ready to continue. After a few years of working full time in many different vocations, the one that stood out most to me was a summer program that sent me all around the country to express the importance of education and give tools to those that needed, I'm sorry, that needed those most to be successful at the grade school level. The sheer amount of happiness that came from this was impeccable, but it was still took me two years after being with this program to find out that education was my calling. I returned back to school in the winter of 2014 on a loan. I was taking classes part-time as that was all I could afford. My motivation to learn was higher than ever. The next year I came across a Teachers of Tomorrow scholarship. Unfortunately, I came across a scholarship two days before the deadline. I raced to complete the application and updated my resume with ferocity. I turned it all in with a bead of sweat around my brow, only to be told that I was missing two letters of recommendation. With one day left, the email streamed to anyone I could think of. My physical fitness professor, Ms. Collard, was my go-to GRCC professor. Luckily enough, she saw my email and responded immediately, notifying me that she would have the letter of recommendation that night and would have it to me before the end of the day. 
The second recommendation was from a high school math teacher out of the state of California. It was a pleasure, I had the pleasure of working with him the summer prior at a program called Super Camp based out of Oceanside, California. His email, however, took a little longer because he's on California time and was a full-time teacher. So that night I actually received the email at 1 a.m. So with my two letters of recommendation, I forwarded the emails over to Ms. Stacy Diver to have my scholarship finally submitted. With the scholarship funds that I was awarded, I was finally able to attend GRCC at the full-time level. Before, I had never taken more than seven credits in a semester, but this year I have taken roughly 30 credits alone while working 40 plus hours and have just recently added on additional time in a classroom obtaining my volunteer hours in a high school setting. I'm very happy with all that has come with this past year, and I owe a great sum of compliments this year to all of you. So with the utmost sincerity and gratitude, I thank you, and I'm confident that I can speak on behalf of all our scholarship recipients when we say we thank you. Thank you, Blake, and talk about tenacity. This young man just got out of bed about 25 minutes ago. <laughs> Next, I would like to introduce Yolanda Ramirez. Yolanda is the recipient of the Harvey Olson Scholarship. And with Yolanda this morning is her mother, Ellie. Thank you, Ellie, for being here. Yolanda, please come to the podium. Good morning. My name is Yolanda Ramirez, and I would like to begin by thanking each and every one of you for ta from taking time from your day to be here. I would also like to thank each and every one of the scholarship recipients for their perseverance to achieve and reach their goals, knowing that the career of their choosing will help and will impact lives in the near future. And lastly, to each of the donors who have donated to their respective scholarship and the GRCC Foundation. Each of us in this room face challenges. Everyone has a story to tell, and I would like to share mine. I am what many call first-generation student. I am the eldest of four daughters born in a small rural village of the state of Michoacan in Mexico located approximately 2,273 miles from the place I stand today. My parents had a struggle of their own. Um, my father was a farmer and grew corn to sell to the, the people of the village. My father came from a family of 14. He was the second youngest child and was forced to leave um, school at a young age because my grandparents could no longer afford to send them to school. My mother lost her father when she was two years old. And with this, the man of the house and the provider, when she was two years old and My parents, I'm sorry, <laughs> my parents married at a young age and after the arrival of their second daughter, my parents wanted a different lifestyle um, for my sister and I. It was my dad's desire to provide a better future for his family that brought us to the United States in search of the American dream. I have lived in the US since I was five years old. And when I first arrived to the United States, I lived in Illinois in which my dad rented a bedroom in my uncle's house so that we could live. Working multiple jobs, my parents managed to save enough money and were able to move um, and buy a house here in Grand Rapids. While in Michigan, I continued to go to school and pretty much went on with my life, but it wasn't until I turned 17, getting a 
getting ready to fill college applications that I realized that my dreams of receiving a college education and obtaining a degree was not going to be easy and began to seem almost impossible. It was here that I discovered that even with the difficulties of paying for a college education and after I graduated, I would, be, I would not be allowed to carry a career in my field for the simple fact that I was not born in the country. Which means I don't have the same rights that many of my classmates do. Just sh short of turning 18 I an and entering adulthood, I found out that at the time in which I entered the country, I did not do it with the visa. And even though my parents filled an application in 2001 to adjust my status, year after year passed by and I remained on a waiting list. My parents patiently waited for an answer and after not receiving one, they sat me down one afternoon and explained to me what my situation was. Meanwhile, I saw friends and classmates receiving their acceptance letters to various colleges and universities. And with time, one by one, graduated. Um, and I couldn't help but to feel that I was being left behind. And it was thanks to the administration of President Obama that I stand before you today. Um, I remember well the June of 2012 in which President Obama, um, in, his speech, in his speech, said the following. He said, these are young people who study in our schools and play in our neighborhoods. They're friends with our kids and they play allegiance to, their, to our flag. They are American in their heart, in their minds, and in every single aspect but one. One paper. Um, they were brought to this country by their parents, sometimes even as infants, and often have no idea that they're undocumented until they apply for a job or a driver's license or a, scho or a college scholarship. Yes, I'm a DACA student, also known as a deferred action for a childhood arrival. And after living in the shadows, I can finally see the end, the light at the end of the tunnel. However, being a DACA student came with its limitations, and the most meaningful one is that although I now attend college and I pursue a higher level education, I do not qualify for financial aid from the government, and I am um, ineligible for numerous scholarships. I graduated with a great GPA from high school in 2008, receiving numerous awards and recognitions, yet I'm faced with paying for classes and textbooks on my own. Um, granted a work permit with DACA, I work sometimes more than 60 hours a week in order to afford my new expenses. I, um, I remember the surprised look and tears of joy um, on my mother's face the day I walked into her and told her, Mom, I start my journey as a college student in two weeks. You see, I had secretly registered here at GRCC um, without informing my mom or my dad that I was doing so. And they were so happy because not a lot has changed in that small village um, in Michoacan in Mexico. It still has a population of uh, 3,113 with approximately 350 homes, and only 321 of its inhabitants have access to healthcare. The village 
in which 400 of the population above 15 years of age cannot read or write. The village has only two elementary schools and one middle school, and anyone wanting to attend high school or college is forced to travel outside of the village, for which few do due to low, low resources. Um, it is for this reason that I am very grateful for the opportunities and the caring professors and staff I have encountered while here at GRCC. Um, as this current semester comes to an end, I hope to stand on a solid 3.6 GPA and once again make it on a dean's list. I currently do volunteer hours at my church because it has been my devotion and my faith that has kept me strong. I also share my free time with Grand Rapids Public Schools as a tutor for students that struggle academically as I might have um, at a young age due to the language barrier. I think back to the moment I decided to apply for a scholarship. I was very nervous yet hopeful, um, but honestly, I cannot put into words the overwhelming joy that filled my heart when I found out that there was someone else out there who had deposited a bit of faith as well as money in me. And that someone out there believed in the potential I have. For this, I wanna give a sincere thank you from the bottom of my heart to the Harvey Alton family for this scholarship that I was awarded. May you also receive my parents' eternal gratitude for helping their daughter at a time in which they are unable to do so. Thank you for everything that you do for us students. I share this story with you and hope that you will continue to donate and contribute your hard-earned money to such a great cause. I pledge to do the same in the future, to form a scholarship that another student will benefit from the same way that I have. My hope is to receive a degree and work as a social worker with a background in psychology and sociology as a sign of love and admiration for my parents, for their courage to, and to reassure them that leaving their home, their home country, their parents, their brothers and sisters, and everything they knew behind was indeed worth it. And of course, to give back to this country as again, as a sign of gratitude for all that it has done for me. Thank you all and have a blessed day. Thank you, Yolanda. All I can say is thank goodness for waterproof mascara. Holy smokes. <laughs> Donors, uh, she is. <laughs> every student that is sitting in here today, every student that walks the halls of GRCC has a story. And um, they're here uh, because they need us. They need, they need help. They need um, just, a, just a little push. And um, the fact that a perfect stranger will come forward and, and take on the responsibility of helping a student financially is overwhelming for our students. And I want you to know they are very thankful and very grateful for that. 
and um, all of us here at GRCC are very thankful and grateful that you support our mission and our students the way that you do. Thanks, you did a great job. <laughs> um, now, we're gonna close the program for this morning so we can get you out of here on time and I'll ask Dave Custer to come forward and I promise he won't make you cry. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing up here. I, I think we should have just closed with uh, Yolanda. Uh, this is one of my favorite events of the foundation because we hear stories like this every year. Last year we heard the story of a, of a single mother that was 30 some years old. And she would not have been able to advance her career if it weren't for the community college and for the scholarship that she received. And we hear those stories every day, like Kathy said. And that's why this college is so important. The two words that Steve used, opportunity and hope. First of all, it gives people the opportunity to, to come and advance their, themselves and their life. It gave me an opportunity. My parents couldn't afford to send me to a four-year uh, college. Um, so I was able to come here for two years and then go to a two-year college. So that opportunity uh, allowed me to advance in my career to start with a company called Steelcase. Uh, without that, without the community college, which was junior college at the time, I never would have had that opportunity to, to, um, to go to a company like Steelcase because they only hired college graduates. So, so the opportunity is important. Uh, not only because of the low cost of our tuition compared to a four-year four um, college, but because of all these scholarships. And so it's so important. And the second word that Steve used is hope. And it gives people hope, like Yolanda and, and the single mother that we heard last year. Um, it gives people hope that want to learn how to be an auto mechanic or a tool and die worker, and they go to MTech. There's so many things that we do here to give hope to people, and this is the only, probably the only place where they can get that hope. So it's the people starting off going to school for two years and then going to another school out of high school, and it's people that want to come back and advance their life. They may be a single mom, they may be somebody that's 35 years old or 40 years old, but they realize the importance of an education, they want to do better in their life. And these scholarships that you give are, are the things that allow that to happen. And that is really cool, and, and it's why I'm so involved and love this school so much. It's that opportunity and hope that it gives everybody. So we thank you all. Uh, the students here are just superstars. Uh, we heard Yolanda works 60 hours a week, plus takes a full load here. Um, we heard Blake works 40 hours a week, plus takes a full load here. Another student at my table works 40 hours a week, plus 15 hours of class. So these, these students are serious. They're doing a good job. They need your help. We hear stories like sometimes without a scholarship, a student's car will break down and they can't, don't have the money to get to school. They need this money. And so we thank you for that. Students, we thank you for your dedication. We hope that you remember these uh, donors and, and like Yolanda's pledge today, she's gonna, when she's able, she's gonna uh, give money back to the school. And we hope all of you students uh, remember that 10, 15 years from now when you're able to. So thanks again for coming. Have a great rest of the day.